Welcome to another unboxing video from theplayersaid.com. My name is Grant. Today I'm unboxing 1812 uh, War on the Great Lakes Frontier from Compass Games. This was one I backed on Kickstarter a couple of months ago and it delivered about six weeks ago. I, I enjoy any game on the War of 1812, the American Revolutionary War. There's not a lot of them out there. Uh, but this was one definitely that caught my eye. I uh, went ahead and backed it on Kickstarter. We got a copy, and I'm uh, pretty excited. So very, very uh, you'll notice this is a two-inch box. Um, one of their very sturdy boxes. I, I like when Compass invests in these sturdy boxes because they just make them better. I feel like I can uh, not be so dainty with them, and they're not going to break or warp or or do other things. Here's a look at the back of the box, some of the counters. The maps are very interesting. I'll show you what I mean by that. This game is a card-driven game, uh, so there's going to be multiple decks of cards, one for the U.S. side and then one for the British as well. The designer is Ken Rappel. Uh, the game artist is Ivan Sikaris. We've interviewed him before uh, about his art and his style, and he's done some very cool games. Um, the game is a medium complexity game. There's some of the scale elements, two player. Solitaire suitability is medium. Uh, average time to play is one and a half hours to nine. Obviously, that's a campaign game versus a smaller uh, scenario. So we'll, uh, we'll dive into that. But it, great looking product. And I hope, frankly, that the gameplay is as good as it looks, because I think if that's the case, this is going to be a big winner uh, to me. All right, so the first thing we have as we open um, the box here are five decks of, pl of playing cards, right? A card-driven game. These are cards that are going to provide you with your actions. There will be some events on there. You notice that one says an event. So, yeah, there are five of these. I've opened one of each. Let's go ahead and check out the British. Love this art, the lion. Um, go ahead and flip one of those over. Uh, event, you can see here's command points or ops points, depending on what they call it in the game. And then here's a year. And if you look at... So the cards in this deck appear to be 1813... You can see here on the bottom, and 1814. So there's there's quite a few cards, uh, but you can see they have different, just different uh, things that happen. You can also use them for the ops. Um, here's a post-combat card. British suffer one additional step loss. U.S. suffers two. So that's kind of cool. I always like games that throw in battle events because it just... In addition to dice, it throws in some other elements of of luck, uh, which is always kind of cool. Um, so this says U.S. deck, but then, so let, let's take a look at the U.S. cards. There's obviously more of them. There's three of these in here. This is 1814. Here's an evade card. Not really sure what that's about, but it's going to be cool learning that. There, here there are, there appear to be a couple of combat formation cards, almost as if you're choosing what you're going to do. You can see they say attacker and defender. Very nice. Love the art. Just really love it. And then the rest of these are made up of a mixture of U.S., British, and those attacker defender cards. But uh, re really great looking cards. They're very thick. You're going to wear these out. You play them two or three times. They're going to start to show uh, wear. Hopefully, hopefully not. Uh, there are a bunch of dice here. You've got four traditional six-siders. And then you've got three, uh, one, two, three, four eight-siders. That's kind of unique. Uh, these are sealed for freshness. Oh, I wish you could smell that. I opened it up, and I, I wish you could smell that. I'm just kidding. It's a joke. But yeah, it uses eight siders and six siders, so that's kind of unique. Nice looking dice. So here we're, we're coming to the maps. And I believe there are at least two uh, big, big maps. So let's go ahead and move these because I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to open these up. I actually like it when I unbox these 
that the maps are on top because you get to show those off immediately and they're always so great. Let me move these cards and dice out of the way so I can get that down. So remember I made the comment that the maps are very unique. As you know, the War of 1812, particularly in the Great Lakes region, and this is Lake Ontario, uh, Lake Champlain. So this is the east over above New York and uh, Ohio, kind of on the east here. You can see New York and Vermont, Pennsylvania, New York. Here, here are uh, those the, the, the lines of those states kind of drawn on there. But the map, you can see, focuses around the water. Here's the waterways, the connections, the lakes here. A lot of the battles that were fought in the north, there were a lot of ground battles as well. But a lot of what happened was a fight over control of the Great Lakes, particularly in the War of 1812. So very cool that the, net, the maps focus on that. I think that's very unique. Don't know that I've ever seen a game do that before, and you're probably yelling at me, oh, but this game does that. Well, I... I don't know that game that you're referring to. Over here, there's a combat display kind of on the left side of the map. You have a full sequence of play, uh, two parts of the sequence of play here. Uh, here you have the different symbols and villages and forts on the map. That's always nice. You have some different turn record track, other record track. Don't know if that's like number of cards. And then you've got the wider war with the United States track. So that's kind of interesting. So that's one of those maps. Let's go ahead and open this second map. And yeah, it's just more of the Great Lakes, right? So this is Lake Erie, parts of Lake Huron shown there. I'll slide that down. So once again, very unique take on this battle. Very much looking forward to playing this one, frankly. I think it looks absolutely phenomenally amazing. That's why I backed it on Kickstarter. Really was interested in it the moment I saw it. So great looking maps. They are, you can see there's hexes. Okay, so the, the rule book and the playbook. So there are two, these are like magazines, man. That play, this is a playbook. My gosh, I mean, there's, <laughs> 60 pages, different scenarios, some notes. I'm assuming there's going to be some examples of play. This says quick play naval combat, so you're going to have to study this to kind of learn it. Solitaire play and tips, kind of a chronology of the war, which is very cool. Kind of going 1813, 1812, 1813, and 1814. Very neat. Some, some information about the different counters and leaders, Tecumseh. Here you can see Thomas McDonough, William Henry Harrison, uh, ultimately the president. He was from Indiana, our only president ever to uh, be elected. Didn't live long. I think he lived like two or three months because he died of pneumonia after our inauguration day. Winfield Scott, very famous leaders in the Battle of 1812. So that's the playbook. Um, how to play, a little bit more information, and then here's the rule book. Once again, I said it's a magazine, and th th this thing is thick, almost 50 pages. But there, there is a, a great deal of graphics trying to help us play and understand the different components, the different parts. Looks good. Here's a sequence of play for spring and summer phases, sequence of play for winter. Obviously, winter is treated differently. Uh, how to do movement. Naval movement, bateau movement, commodore transfer, evasion, siege warfare. There's obviously going to be lots of sieges. Combat overview. Here's a siege warfare table. I'm sure that's probably on one of the player aids. Just a lot of information. This one's going to be a little bit heavier. Going to take some time to, uh, to digest. Uh, these two boards, let's see. Very interesting. If you remember back to that regiment card that I showed you, or here we go, these cards, those appear to connect with these boards. I don't know how that connects, but obviously there's a connection. Think of these as your tactical board where you're going to be moving some of your units around. You've got boxes for support units and lead regiments. You've got a left center and a right flank. I think that's kind of cool. 
My guess is that these are put here on the combat displays. Uh, I'm, I'm guessing because I haven't read the rules, but that's kind of what I'm seeing. And then these are different formations. So that's going to be very unique. Very interested to see how that uh, comes about. There are a lot of setup cards, player aid, terrain chart, CRT, different scenario setup. So very helpful with these player aids. There's about 10 of these, which is phenomenal. Good to see these games being made to be very playable. I think one of the worst things sometimes when I play war games is it's like, duh, how, how am I supposed to play with two people, have one rule book, and be able to go back and forth and play quickly? You Frankly, you can't. So having these play aids really is going to help that. So that's very nice to see. Um, I'm going to be unable to unwrap. These counters are wrapped, and I noticed that that Compass does that on their Kickstarters. I'm not exactly sure what the need for that is, other than, you know, maybe these come out uh, very easily from the sprues. Doesn't seem to be, don't get me wrong, they're not, it's not like they're hard to get out, but getting this thing off is pretty hard. So yeah, a couple of pages of counters here, a couple of sheets of counters. Back two. So here you can see them. There's a obviously a United States set of counters. Each side has one counter sheet. Basically, you've got some of the units, the different boats. Very interesting. Supplies. Let's flip those over on the back side. Kind of cool. Yeah, these are really great looking. So it looks like this game's going to focus more on the naval battles, but it also probably has some uh, different ways to represent the units, and this may be the way you represent the units, as I talked to you about before. Um, but you can see different types of, these are British. Here you have some of the native tribes, the Ojibwa, Mohawk, Potawatomi, Shawnee, Wyandot, Miamis, um, Kanagawas, the Odawas. Those are different units that are going to be used on land, I'm assuming. And then you have, yeah, so here, here's some more British units. And then you have some American units uh, here. Sorry, I really overlooked those because they had numbers on them. So there definitely are ground units. Uh, there's going to be some ground combat, but those are nice looking counters. O overall, a very nice looking game, well produced, lots of content. I mean... Hundreds and hundreds of cards, great looking counters. This is a nice looking game. And I can only hope that the game plays very well, and I'm sure that it will. I have no reason to believe that it won't. We love card driven games, they're very interesting, and this one looks to have a lot of interesting mechanics in it. So thanks for watching. Uh, can't wait to get this one played. Once again, 1812, War on the Great Lakes Frontier from Compass Games. This one just came off of Kickstarter. Very interested in it, and I hope you enjoyed the video. Thanks a lot. Uh, I've been Grant for the Player's Aid.